Ciao friends! Feather Thimble Hooks. Thanks for stopping by and today we get to make our patchwork sleeves. It's going to be very easy, I promise. It's not going to be hard. But we're going to take this and this and turn it into a sleeve. Alright, so here is my map, my diagram, my planogram for my sleeves. I had to make these way smaller, by the way. With the original pattern that I had, the original map that I had done, uh, these had 20 rectangles, which was way too big, way too big. I took out one row and one column, so they ended up looking like this. So you can see that they're the same, I'm just going to put a cuff on one side and a cuff on the other side, so that they're the same block work, but the cuffs are on the other sides. So what's what we're going to do today? I already have one done, and Lily already tried it on her arm. I've tried it on my arm. This is a good length. The other one was just simply too long. It's supposed to be oversized, but that was like really oversized. So I made it a little bit smaller. So that way I do have some extra squares now, but that's cool because I have to make two of these anyway. But if you made all of your squares, I will show you later what we can do with those squares. So let's get started on this guy. Here is my arm. It's four by three. And we connected everything the way we were supposed to. Now we're going to make it into a tube. Right side facing up so that we can connect these sides right in here. We want to connect all the way down the same way that we connected everything else because these are all 19. Every one of these is 19. They're going to line up beautifully. That's why we did all of our squares 19 stitches wide. And I have just a little bit of black left here and this should be enough. So I'm going to use this, this little bit of black. We are going to get out our four millimeter hook. I have my favorite, my baby, my four millimeter prim. And we're going to go into our first stitch on this green right here. On the loop that's closest to us. Always have to do the loop that's closest on this side and on the opposite side. Find that same stitch and do the loop that's furthest away go through those two loops. Now we're going to fasten on. We do the same thing in the next stitch. Just bring that yarn in. Now we're going to go through the closest loop and the furthest loop on the orange. Pull through and slip stitch. Just like we did on everything else that had finished edges. See the front loop here? the back loop on the orange one, pull through and slip stitch. Easy peasy. Now we're going to do that all the way down, all the way down and our arm will be a tube now. It will look like an arm instead of just being a panel. And my last couple stitches, remember we'll go through the front, the closest and the furthest slip stitch closest, furthest, and slip stitch. And this should be my last one. Yay, it is. And there's my last stitch. I still have some black left, so I'm going to just finish this off snip right here so it's not quite so long and in my way. And boom. There. Now we have a tube all connected. Pull it back right side out and you can see how beautiful it looks and you have no seam. You can't find the seam. Look at that. That's my favorite. I hate seams. I hate knots that show. I hate all those things. So I made this as easy as possible. Now we want to do our ribbing. All right, so you get out the red. Remember, I was using Big Twist Value, and this one is called Deep Red. Yes, this is Deep Red. I think they also make Varsity Red, but I chose Deep Red because I like that shade of red a little bit better than the Varsity Red. It's a little bit deeper color instead of being red. It's red. So we're going to make this guy, just like all the other ribbings. We are going to make a slip knot with our 4 millimeter hook and our Big Twist. And we're going to chain 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 
seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Now we're going to work in these back bumps. So turn your chain just a little bit so you can see these back bumps for every chain. And we're going to work one single crochet into each one of those bumps. So we'll end up with ten single crochets off of our chain eleven. little back bump, single crochet, done. So there's our very beginning. That is our first row. Row one. Row two through 44 are going to be exactly the same way. Chain one and turn our work. We're going to be working in the back, the back loops only, except on the very outside stitches we want to use both loops, go through both loops just to make a nice finished edge. So there's our first one was both loops. Now we go to the back back loop only right here. Not this. We just want that back loop. So we're a single crochet back loop only until we get to our last stitch. Then we're making ribbing. There's my last back loop only. I have one stitch left. So in this stitch right here, I want to go under both loops and do a normal single crochet just to make a nice finished edge. There we go. That was row two. Now rows two through 44 are exactly that same way. So we'll chain one turn our work. The first stitch is under both loops and then all the others in the middle are in the back loop only. last back loop only. So there's one stitch left and that one gets a normal single crochet. So you do that rows 2 through 44 and then I will see you in just a minute. All right I just made this swatch a little bit bigger because I already have my I already have my cuff ready. I just made this a little bit bigger so I can show you how you finish off what is row 45. We're going to chain one and turn our work and our last row which is row 45 a single crochet all the way down every stitch is a single crochet not the back loops just the whole normal old single crochet like everybody knows how to do all the way down there we go if this was this long in the first place, it's 45 long. Now we want to chain one and we want to work down this side right here or along the top which will now be the top. We want to work along the top. We want to evenly space these. There should be one in every stitch. We want to have 45 single crochets, one in every row all the way down. So just evenly space everything nicely so you have 45 single crochets along the top of your ribbing piece. Just like that. So now you have this nice finished edge right here, which is what I have right here. And now when you have all of that done, then you just slip stitch these sides together so it's a tube. Slip stitch these two sides together any way you want. But what I usually do is I go through this first loop and then the back loop of the other one and I finish a slip stitch all the way down. So it will be like this. Go through this stitch right here. Go 
through the whole stitch there. The back loop of this stitch right here. Pull through everything and slip stitch. And do that all the way down. And it will look like this. This is what I ended up with on the inside. So as you can see, this is the unfinished sides right here. This does not have a beautiful 19 stitch count on it. And they're all a little different. They all have different row counts. So what I did here was we have three rectangles, three panels here, three squares in our panel. So what I did was I evenly single crocheted 15 on each one so that both arms are symmetrical. They are the same because it's very easy to have one arm that's way bigger than the other because you didn't get your tension right. So we're going to have both of them are going to look like this and have the same width and the same stretchies and the same size on your wrist, which I thought was amazingly important. So what I did here, so you can see I started here and I just took a scrap of my yellow and along this edge I did 15 stitches in yellow. You just evenly do them along the side. And then here I did 15 in red and 15 in orange, which matches up to our 45 that we just did for our ribbing. Yay! So now we're going to attach this. We're going to get them attached together so that we have a sleeve that looks just like this one. So we want to get this part and this part together to look like this because right now it is, this is way bigger than our ribbing. So we're going to get this all clustered together. To join our cuff and our sleeve, we want to turn it back inside out again. And we are going to be using those stitches that we just did evenly, the 15 of red, 15 orange, 15 yellow. We are going to be using those to attach our red. So this is my first stitch right here. Go through the front loop just like we did on all the other ones. The closest loop and the furthest loop. on our brand new yellow stitches and slip stitch. Closest loop, furthest loop, pull through the red and slip stitch. Closest loop, furthest loop, slip stitch. All the way around and I'm still using my four millimeter. I will meet you at the other end of my sleeve cuff. I only have a couple stitches left and the cuff is attached. Go through the front loop and then the back loop of the other one. So it's the closest loop and the furthest loop. Slip stitch and one more right here. Boom. And boom. Beautiful. All right, and now we're just going to do another finish off slip stitch into our first stitch that we did right here. So we can call that done and we'll snip because this piece is just too long. Snip and pull through. Boom. And now we get to turn it right side out again so you can see how beautiful your sleeve is. All right, and there is our beautiful sleeve cuff is attached. It is gorgeous. And it looks just like this one. So now we have two sleeves. So next week we get to build this thing finally. But this will, this technique obviously will work for any colors. You can do any, any patchwork that you want. So thanks for stopping by. Thank you for supporting my small business. Please subscribe to Thimblehooks and stop back soon. Thanks. Bye.